Hello everyone, my name is Eric Jones and we're going to uh, take a look at a set of slides that I developed uh, from one of the classes I teach at the community college and it's entitled Irrigation in the Age of Technology. And I'm going to, um, to try to do my best to relate um, this technology to irrigation. And when I'm, when I'm talking about technology, I'm not talking about the different controllers that we can use or the different um, technology that we can implement into our um, irrigation systems, but into our irrigation business. So it's, 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 it's based on how we can improve um, on technology to help us run our business, not to uh, actually use in the field installing irrigation systems. And to begin with, I just want to talk about, um, you know, technology um, itself. It, technology is not new. You know, it's been around forever, but it's always defined by the time that we're in. I still hear my dad talking about getting the first television set in their house or getting the first telephone. I remember him talking about having to drive up to the gas station to call my mom when they were dating. He would drive, you know, two miles up the road um, to to the gas station to use the telephone. Then they were able to get a phone in their home. Uh, I still hear my grandparents talk about running water, getting running water, getting a bathroom in the house. So we take that technology for granted today because we've always known about it but new technology is always developing and it's always dependent on the time that we're in so in my short 42 years of life on earth I'm looking back at the technology that's developed um, since I was a young guy and more or less what's happened in the last 20 years uh, when I first went to college, uh, you know, I went to a technical school right out of high school, and there was no such thing as email. It wasn't until my first year uh, at App State before I transferred out of there um, that I had an email address, and that was given to me by the school. That was my first email address ever. There wasn't no such thing as Gmail or our Yahoo Mail at that time. It was only the school email address, and I thought that was the, the absolute coolest thing. I remember my uh, parents getting their first cell phone, uh, and that was when I was in basic training at the, uh, in the summer of uh, 1992 in Orlando, Florida. Uh, they uh, had sent in a letter their cell phone number that they got in case that I ever needed um, to call them that I had their cell phone number and I was like what is a cell phone but it was a handheld phone that they could take it where I was used to having a car phone you know they had car phones mounted in their cars but they had the first cell phone they paid like twelve hundred dollars for it but they got it just in case they needed me while I was gone not like I could call them from basic training but they'd sent me a letter saying hey here's the uh, cell phone number if you need me um, look at what computers have done in the last you know 10 years or well, not necessarily computers but our handheld devices the, the cell phone that mom and dad had back in 1992 could only make phone calls you can run your complete irrigation business from your cell phone now you can have um, all your calls go to your cell phone all your email you could have the pro landscape app on your phone or tablet that you could show clients your drawings AutoCAD has an app that you could show your AutoCAD drawings uh, to clients. Uh, if you're using things like Clip software or Computerized Loan Industry Program, we use that for years. Dad still uh, uses it now, but we, just, we don't have as many clients as we did. But he could keep, you know, electronic file or uh, everything on the Clip app on their phone. Uh, the GPS that we can monitor our trucks where they're at all from the from the cell phone and probably I think one of the most important things for us help to market our business is the social media apps that we have on our cell phone 
and there's a slide a little bit later in the lecture that, that, that talks about the different social medias but we have to jump on that bandwagon or that phase of technology to to help us grow our business um, do do we need it no probably not some of you guys are probably still heavily dependent on word of mouth but if you're a new company you know getting your name out there um, and trying to build your business or even you know guys that's been in business several years if you're wanting that new work or the new customer uh, and and to get into some of these newer neighborhoods that's being built you're, you're probably gonna need to jump on the the social media uh, technology of today um, especially you know the uh, the Facebook's and the, the the Twitter's and, and all of that and I'll, I'll talk more about that in the slides but just sit back and think about all the things that you've seen change uh, since you've started your irrigation business or your landscape business, I mean, a lot of it has uh, developed uh, over. You know, my kids still talk about dad. You, you guys, you were, you didn't have Wi-Fi when you were little. No, we never had it. We never, we didn't have the internet. I remember when I first graduated college. You know, mom and dad were still running dial-up in their office, and I was developing their website and and taking pictures uh, with a uh, uh, with a uh, digital camera that put the pictures on a floppy disk and I would have to come back put it in the old school computer and you know those floppy disks could only hold about 10 pictures because uh, uh, the image was 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 so big but then I would upload the pictures onto the website let it process it would process like all night long and we weren't able to see how it looked on the web until the next morning when it processed all night now you can do that in 20 seconds in the field you can take a picture with your camera phone upload it to Facebook your Twitter your Instagram and it be on your website or your blog uh, within 20 seconds so from my point being graduating college in 1997 till you know 2015 right now 18 years um, look what's changed and, and, and that technology look how much time that technology has saved me so and I think we're gonna see more and more I think we are in the age right now this time uh, in history that we're gonna see probably more technology developed um, than even in the future well you know we we say that now I'm sure people 200 years from now will keep developing stuff but you think about it look at what we've gone from in the last 20 years and probably what we'll see in the next 20 years we're in a good good position to see a lot of new technology so benefits of technology well computers again they can help us accelerate irrigation calculations whether it be um, you know the amount of water going through the pipe whether it's designing the system um, whether it's drawing the system it, it's it takes all the handwork uh, out of doing uh, an irrigation plan even though uh, I have the lecture drawing the irrigation plan that shows you how to do it quickly and uh, uh, you know sufficient enough to, to draw it by hand but these computers uh, can can do so much with our calculations and, and so much with our design of the irrigation systems with with products such as AutoCAD, RainCAD, uh, even Pro Landscape. You can do the irrigation design with it and and, and that software. Uh, computers can project the effects of changes in calculations. So whether we change the design or uh, you add smaller pipe larger pipe different heads in the system you can uh, you can see the uh, the effects that these changes have have made and computers can always recall historical data very very quickly uh, for us that could actually help us when we're setting up these uh, these uh, irrigation controllers that um, that use the historical data or weather data in the past so these computers 
uh, have definitely benefited us as irrigation contractors and will continue to do so uh, more in the future. Um, computers provide spell check and grammar corrections. Now, we all want to sound professional and uh, sometimes that's hard to do and I always tell um, you know, I always sometimes have to apologize for what, what comes out of my mouth, especially uh, after drill weekend. My wife can always tell that I've worn the Army uniform uh, Sunday night when I get back from drill. And the first few days, she said, Eric, the, uh, the language that you use is unacceptable. But she said, I understand you're around a bunch of military guys, and that's all that's said, and you pick up on it quick. And thankfully that I can get over that pretty quick and I can get back into uh, to my normal uh, uh, language. But these computers, guys, I, um, I love the fact that they can do spell check and, and actually help me write a document that I need to give, um, to give someone. You don't want to sound uh, illiterate based on how you type and the computers can help you do that. They can provide quick graphic illustrations especially when it comes to uh, uh, landscape design I love the digital imaging aspects that uh, come with pro landscape you can do the uh, the two-dimensional plan drawings but you can also take pictures at your clients home bring those back and and give them a 3d representation very quickly uh, with the use of their uh, digital imaging um, part of the software and there's several other uh, software programs uh, that are good for the digital imaging I'm just very familiar uh, with the pro landscape that's what we use here at the college and along with AutoCAD so I'm just uh, real familiar with those and, and not so much with the others and then the computers can avoid human errors especially with calculations you may um, you know forget something you know mistakenly that could cost you a lot of money and these uh, the computers can actually uh, catch that so common uses of computers and um, a lot of this is redundant for you guys uh, you know it and uh, so it's a, um, a refresher for you and a lot of you guys may use computers a lot more for a lot more uh, um, tasks than what these are, but correspondence, um, corresponding back and forth with your clients, whether it be email, whether it be a typed uh, letter on stationery, and I'll be up front with you, I'm not a big fan of emailing my clients back and forth. Now you guys that are taking my classes, yes, I, that's the way we communicate. Uh, I have a lot of you guys that send me text messages. I never talk to you on the phone. You text me how to sign up for a course and I um, um, you know, text it back to you or we respond through email. Uh, very few of you do I uh, get a chance to speak uh, to you on the telephone and you know, hopefully one day we'll run across each other at the uh, uh, Green and Grow show or uh, you know at, at a uh, <coughs> irrigation convention or something but use your word Microsoft Word to correspond have nice letterhead print it out people like seeing um, um, you know a typed letter with a handwritten signature and I even go to the point is where we have a nice letterhead or a nice printed envelope with our information up top, but sometimes just handwriting the uh, the address of your customer, especially if it's a residential client, it seems more personal to them. They're more apt to uh, to to open it. Customer accounts, whether we're using uh, QuickBooks and integrating it with uh, Clip software, it's going to keep track of all of our accounts. There's uh, uh, I still know some guys out there that have a you know 150 yards that they mow weekly that they still keep up with it uh, in a notebook it's not what I would want to do but uh, they do it and they write down everything and they send out handwritten 
um, invoices. But it's a lot easier to keep up with your customers, whether it's just a Microsoft Excel file uh, that you can implement into a correspondence letter that you can send out to everybody. So uh, very quickly you can send out a letter to all of your clients by having a database of your customer accounts. Accounts payable. Uh, you know, plenty of software out there. You know, I'm a big fan of QuickBooks that will help you do your payroll and your taxes and it keeps up with uh, who owes you and what you owe. Um, and the good thing about QuickBooks now, doing the QuickBooks online, you can keep up with it in the field on your cell phone or your tablets. You don't necessarily have to have it. Uh, uh, you don't necessarily have to spend all night uh, entering this information. Either you've got a secretary that's helping you do that, or uh, you can you can do it with your uh, with your tablets or your cell phone. They're going to help you do your payroll. They're going to help you do your taxes. Uh, using a program like QuickBooks, you know, our accountant's like, hey, just let me download your company file, and he goes back to the office and does what he needs to do, and, and um, uh, makes it makes it a lot easier on us. And again, mailing list. I keep track of all of our customers in um, Microsoft Excel. I just like working with Excel. You can do it with Access, uh, Microsoft Access as well, but we send out labels. We could print them out uh, on labels, or I could insert it into the Microsoft Word document. That uh, I can do a generic letter or correspondence letter that I'm, you know, say, hey, uh, Mr. And Mrs. Smith, we'd like to introduce you to Joe Smith, who has just joined our company. Blah blah blah. You send out correspondence that way. But I could take all of our customers. Uh, that's in the Excel database, insert their name into the letter. It'll print an envelope with their name stamped on it if I didn't want to handwrite it. And I can do this very, very quickly. As fast as my printer can do it, it takes me two minutes to do it, and I can have letters ready to go um, for all of our customers. Inventory records. Uh, again, I'm going back to um, you know QuickBooks and Clip because that's what I'm familiar with. Uh, if you use something like Microsoft Projects or even there's a projects module within Clip that will help you keep inventory of what you have. And this is really big for, for nurserymen uh, and uh, greenhouse people and even irrigation guys. You know, you, you keep track of how many, uh, you know, pop-ups that you have and rotors that you have. How many controllers do you have in inventory? And if you keep track of that really well, it's easy to schedule jobs and to um, uh, know when you have to reorder your supplies. And this will actually help you within your, your TQM process or uh, total quality management program uh, for your company. And accounts receivable, big time. Everybody wants to know how much money they have out there and who owes them what. Billing, again, QuickBooks can spit those invoices out really quick. My dad, you know, because they've they've shrunk their business down to something that he can just manage with three or four guys, he's doing all of his QuickBooks stuff on his cell phone. So when they pull up to the job site uh, and they spread 50 bales of pine needles and they put out two bags of milk, he's internet right there on his computer. I mean, not on his computer, but on his cell phone, and it's going to update the QuickBooks online that he uses. And he goes back. All he's got to do is print it and send it out. So he's eliminated, you know, a step in his billing process by doing it from his cell phone. Sales analysis, you can keep track of what you sell the most, what you sell the least. You may not want to do this service anymore and focus on what's making you the money. So it's easy to, uh, to keep track of that. Email. Again, you can send out email. Um, I know I send out bulk email for these irrigation courses, and I appreciate those uh, that you know respond and, and actually take my courses but I do get some nasty emails back from uh, irrigation contractors saying don't ever send me an email about these courses again I do get that I just kind of brush it off um, because they probably thinking it's uh, you know junk email in which we all get a lot of junk email I understand I um, I, you know, I personally use my gmail account that you guys have and email me you know I get 200 emails a day 
whereas you know 150 of them are junk that I have to filter through and I block some of these things but you know email addresses are easily and readily available to get and send out things but with your email it's good to send out newsletters and promotional mailings you can do that through email and we did that uh, when we were cutting several several yards, we sent out a letter saying, "Hey, if you give us your email address, uh, we'll knock off five dollars in the next bill." We had pretty much everybody give us their email address. Well, what that allowed us to do, it saved on postage, and we realized that when we started emailing our invoices to the people, we were getting paid a lot quicker. They would get the email, they would print it, and you have a place on your website that you can pay via PayPal or uh, you know a merchant's account through your bank you're going to get your money a little bit quicker. Yeah, you have to pay the fees, but I love PayPal uh, for getting my money. I'll give my percentage of them to get my money a lot faster. Um, email can be a bad thing at times, though. When we were uh, taking care of a large um, uh, retirement home, had over 80 acres uh, in it, and we mowed it weekly, and we did all the grounds maintenance for it, uh, you know, it had about 130 residential homes in it. It had some apartments. It had a, um, a healthcare facility. It had a dining facility. I mean, it was its own little town, basically. And we did we did the maintenance there for 18 years. And uh, but we had a, uh, one of the guys there. We took care of a croquet court. And this was when email just became popular. Remember, I told you, you know, I had my first email address. Uh, uh, my first year at App State and uh, when I finished uh, finished undergraduate and was working with dad and mom full-time uh, I would take care of this croquet court I would mow it three times a week for this retirement community I would spray it fertilize it top dress it I mean this was like my baby three days of the week and one of the guys that played croquet every single day got my email address and he literally bugged the living crap out of me and he would get very smart and very rude within his emails. It could have been me reading a little more into it, but you know, I'm pretty good at reading people. And that's the bad thing with email. It's the bad thing with text messages. People, you may say something short and sweet, but they may take it as short and sour. You have no derogatory means about it, but the way it comes across to the people uh, could sound like you're insensitive and not worried about their needs. So when it comes to clients, I'd much rather speak with them on the phone because I can let people vent to me uh, in their voice. And by the time, but the time I'm finished listening to them and talking to them, they're they're telling me thank you for uh, for solving their problem. And it's a little harder to do with with email. Um, computers, like I said, they're great for newsletters and promotional mailings. It saves on stamps. And then if you're in the greenhouse. Uh, you know, you can do that control of your greenhouses with your computers. I remember Dad had the old timey alarm mounted beside their bed, and there was like a copper wire that come to it, and it was like an old bell that that rang that had the little knob on the side, and that thing would wake us up in the middle of the night if the greenhouses, uh, you know, got too cold during the winter. And Dad would get up and go down there and, and do what he had to do, but I was. Uh, I remember that bell going off. I was a little young to be helping in the greenhouses then, but um, you know we didn't have computer controlled um, uh, computer controls back then. But he did have the technology that was good for the uh, for the mid 70s uh, to alert him when the greenhouses got too cold. Soil and media mixing. You know your computers can control exactly how much. Uh, peat moss, vermiculite, all that, that if you're in the greenhouse business that can help you keep the right mix. Doing the right mix can save you money over the long run. Labeling of plants. And that's a big thing here. We finally got a labeler uh, at the school that actually helps us uh, when our students produce a crop that we can label it a lot neater and easier with the computers. Landscape specification preparation. Now this is a biggie because I remember this when I was uh, studying landscape architecture. They uh, were teaching us how to take landscape specs and to actually cut manually cut and paste 
um, copies from one project to the next. Now this is all done electronically on the computer. So, you know, mid 90s, I graduated in 97. We were still, when we prepared our landscape specifications for our designs, it was all cut and paste. You'd cut a section out of it, photocopy it, cut it, tape it in there, run a copy, and you'd ma actually manually have a book with this stuff. Now it's all done electronically. Quantification of materials for construction. When you start getting into building uh, BMI or building modeling uh, design type work, this is uh, can save you money and it can tell you exactly what you need. And and A and T has a great program uh, for landscape architecture that's incorporating BMI into it. You can actually walk through the project when it's designed. You can watch it. Uh, on the computer screen and actually walk through the landscape that's just been designed. Plus, if you were to change the scheduling of the trees being installed for this job, how much would it delay or how much time would you save on the project just based on the software they're using? Helps you with plant selection and definitely helps you with irrigation design and graphics. And the biggest thing that it does is it saves you time on manually drawing all this for each drawing. These details of the irrigation uh, heads and the backflow, how to build the backflow. You draw it once, it's there. You can insert it to any one of your designs. Cost estimating. The best, best way to do it. Um, yeah, I'm going to sit down with a notepad and kind of jot down some ideas what I've got to do about the project but then I'm going in the computer and I'm going to do my cost estimates for whether it's for a design job an installation job an irrigation job it's going to help me estimate my cost technical calculations big time for irrigation big time for building retaining walls uh, you know figuring out the load of a wall does it need to be engineered or is it something that we can do if it's grading you know, how much earthwork are we going to move? Geographic information systems, GIS. Now, we used this a lot my senior year at uh, A&T. Um, we had designed a golf course uh, for our senior group project. That was first, first semester uh, senior year. It was a group project, whereas the spring semester of our last year was an individual project. We spent the entire semester working on this. And but our uh, group of uh, me and four other students, we designed this golf course down in Raleigh. We used uh, the, a GIS system that did our soils map, that did our hydrology map, that did our vegetation maps, um, that did, did everything for that. And the GIS was was awesome. It, it printed out nice drawings. We could we could basically see everywhere and when we did the overlays with within the system we were able to see exactly where we needed to put the golf course keeps track of our weather data useful and when we're programming these uh, uh, irrigation controllers that that takes into consideration the past uh, weather history uh, again internet access easy to to look up uh, catalogs and suppliers um, you know, more and more people are just Googling the name of a company uh, to find the supplies that we need versus looking in the phone book. And plus, we can order stuff all over the United States. Think about it. We had to depend strictly on mailed catalogs if we needed to order stuff from uh, across the uh, across the country. Now we can get online, order it. They have it shipped that day. Most of the time, you can do overnight shipping if you had to, or if not, you're going to get it in two or three days web page promotion again uh, it's still good to have a website uh, but I don't think nearly as important as the social media uh, word processing just general use typing numerical cap uh, calculations for our work uh, and then graphic uh, visualization um, you know AutoCAD still the industry standard for 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 design work uh, LandCAD I don't know too many people using that now. I mean, it's still still there. Uh, but then Pro Landscape, you know, we teach that to our students because it does have a CAD, um, you know, 
system with it and it does the digital imaging it'll do the estimating it'll do the irrigation so they touch on all realms of, of computer design with that program AutoCAD you know as a student or with a um, you know a dot edu uh, email address you can use AutoCAD free of charge for a certain limited time if you wanted to uh, you know take a class uh, at a community college, you'd be able to use it. Um, you know, I, I forget what the uh, the length of it is, but um, you could definitely uh, use AutoCAD in your irrigation design. All right, now social media. I think this is the biggest and foremost, most important uh, part of technology that we've seen come across. And to be honest with you, my girls who are 13, 10, and 9. I have three daughters, uh, one teenager and two that are soon to be, but they know more about these social media apps than I do myself. But I do know enough about it to use it on a regular basis. And uh, my parents still use it, not as much. They use it more or less for the strawberries. They do a strawberry farm. And I also have another sideline business where I teach firearms instruction. Uh, I'm an NRA firearms instructor, so I teach, um, you know, concealed carry and um, uh, the NRA uh, pistol course. And we sell uh, tactical gear and, and t-shirt um, um, paraphernalia, you know, stuff to t-shirts and the coffee mugs and stuff uh, targeted towards military and military families. My wife's a big part of that. And we use... Uh, Snapchat, Instagram, uh, and Facebook very, very heavily to promote that business. And uh, our biggest one that we use the most is Instagram. It has generated several followers for us that have purchased a t-shirt. Um, I've gotten more people from Facebook on the firearms instructor class, but Instagram has really put our names out there for selling the t-shirts and the coffee mugs that you know um, that say go army and stuff like that on but where you could use this with with any of your green industry um, um, side of your business and I love snapchat and some people may hate it some people may not know what it's out but I actually have a lecture that you've probably seen on my website um, teaching you how to use Snapchat for the green industry. Snapchat, <coughs> I use it to take all my pictures. I don't use the, the camera app on my phone. I use Snapchat. For some reason, to me, the pictures are just more clear, more crisper. They just look better. And when I take the picture with the Snapchat app, it gives you the option to download it to your phone. Well, you can insert text on it right away, telling them what you're doing. So let's say you're out installing an irrigation system and um, you're putting the sod down on top of it and then you see these sprinklers come up. Hey, you can take a video with your Snapchat or you can take a picture and you can say, hey, irrigation job complete for the day. Saved it to your phone. That's your picture. Well, then within Instagram, I upload it to Instagram. Look at this nice new irrigation job I just did. Or, you know, you're really proud of the, the controller because you've got a, a big, awesome Rainbird controller that you've put in. And it's, you know, tied to the computer system. And it has a wireless uh, handheld device or from the, from the cell phone, the customer can turn on his irrigation system. So you're proud of it. Take a picture of Snapchat. You upload it to your Instagram, which will automatically be set to post to your Facebook and Twitter accounts. So within a matter of a minute, you've sent out all this information to all your social media. Um, so these top four, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter are my favorites. I do have a LinkedIn account. I don't use it that much. And then Pinterest is a good place for you to post ideas for your customers to to see when they see an idea and they see that the idea is posted by you more than likely they're going to call you to come do the work for them but the first four 
I recommend highly to use. Twitter is big in the landscape industry. If it's just following your colleagues, uh, it connects you to people all over the state, all over the country as a matter of fact. Facebook is perfect for the older generations. You know, my parents are big on Facebook, keeping up with their friends, and a lot of the older people are, but my, my kids, they could care less about Facebook. They're more into the Instagram and Snapchat right now. So if you're targeting younger couples, you know, right out of college, just bought their homes, they're going to be on Instagram more so than they are Facebook. So it's all based about which type of customer you want. And I don't care who they are. My customers can be anybody. Anybody that's got the money to hire me, I'm willing to do it and I'm willing to market uh, to them. Everybody's money's good with me. There's there's no discrimination there. Um, future possibilities. Voice commands and design programs, that would be nice. Uh, but uh, you know, it's fairly easy with the mouse. Consolidations and merger, it's harder for the independent companies to thrive. If they are going to sell out, it's going to be a lot easier if, if they've gone to the computer, especially with their accounting systems, and it'll help them to, uh, to be bought out or to actually merge with a larger company. And, you know, I always teach, um, you know, Tony Bass, a good friend of mine that owns Super Lawn Trucks, met him through the Christmas Decor franchise, and I still talk to him every now and then, but I use the book uh, that he wrote with... Um, Michael Gerber, The E-Myth for the Landscape Contractor. That's one of my books that I require for my marketing and management class here at, at school. And uh, um, everybody's, everybody's goal within their business should be to build a business that you can sell. Whether or not it's to sell to your heirs, your, you know, your, your children, or sell to somebody else when you retire. Um, you know, it's not something that you want to hang on to forever and ever. You know, your goal is to build a business that you can sell. And implementing these, this technology will make it a lot easier for you to sell. The flip side of technology, the impact of workforce, job elimination, maybe, maybe not. I mean, we are so dependent on labor force that it's not really going to matter. Yeah, it might help you eliminate one office position, uh, but it's not going to get rid of the guys in the field doing the work. Uh, you may have to have your employees retrain. Yeah, but that's fine. That, that comes with it. Uh, if you're able to implement a new technology that you've got to go and get your customer, I mean, get your uh, employees trained on and you spend a little bit of money on that, but it's going to save you thousands of dollars later, it's worth the investment. Higher education expected. Fewer opportunities for less educated workers. True, but we still need the field workers. And not everybody's going to embrace technology. Um, you know, like I said, I still know guys that cut 150 yards a week and they're keeping up with it in a composition book. It's not the people that you're going to hire to work for you anyway. And your older employees may resist the technology, and that's true. But, again, I think Facebook, you know, the elder, the uh, older uh, generations and, uh, you know, whatever y'all term uh, old, I'm not discriminating against anybody, but, you know, my parents love Facebook. They've embraced that with arms wide open. They've embraced their iPads and their iPhones that they can do their Facebook stuff with. So uh, I feel like an old man some days being 42, but and I see my parents as being a young uh, young couple that's you know excited and you know my dad still could uh, outwork me any day I'm sure. Uh, just that's that's his nature, but they have embraced this this technology of social media. Younger workers enter the field with higher skills because they are familiar with technology. Yeah, and, and, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and a lot of times you can learn uh, from, from the, the younger generation. Again, my kids are teaching me more and more about the social media apps. I use it. My wife uses it to promote our businesses. But the other night I had to ask Sierra about something about Snapchat, and she told me just like that. And then my wife kind of laughed. She said, 
there you are asking our daughter a question about how to promote uh, one of your businesses so it's funny I don't I don't uh, I don't criticize anybody for wanting to learn and sometimes we, we're gonna have to learn from the younger generation and that's okay um, the technology creates less younger people available for employment eh, maybe maybe not I see us as always needing again um, help but today's youth um, coming out of high school yeah they may not um, they might not be geared up for horticulture as, as it was with with my generation so uh, I do think uh, um, you know, even the military, the army has, you know, announced that they're going to have to toughen up basic training, that it's been watered down so much because of people's feelings getting hurt. You know, when I went through, they could still, you know, they could still punch you in the stomach uh, if they wanted to. And, and if they did, nobody said anything. It was, we understood that was part of the training. But now you can't, you can't say a bad word to a, a recruit. You definitely can't uh, touch them with your hands. You can't push them down. You know, I, I remember many a times being on a uh, hike or a march, and uh, you know, you start you know slowing up. I mean, the drill sergeants were pushing you on up front and grabbing you and dragging you if they had to. Now they have to have timeouts if the the children get too stressed. And I, I call them children because they're old enough to, to be they're young enough to be my kids. So. Um, they may not want to do the hard work that's involved with uh, the horticulture or green industry. And that wraps up this lecture. There is a 10 question quiz on Moodle uh, for you to take. And I appreciate your business and I'll see you in the next lecture.